Good day, and welcome to this little mini lecture on how to distress text inside Adobe Illustrator. What you see in front of you here is some text, The Heats, a Seattle band from the late 70s, early 80s. Awesome. And um, the thing about what you see is something that you've probably usually done in Photoshop, distressing text, taking and loading up a Photoshop brush and zapping out some of the text and all. But sometimes in life you're going to need to keep it as a vector. And so what we're going to do is show you the process inside Adobe Illustrator. Um, this process is in plenty of tutorials all over the web and I'm just going to show you uh, some of the basic steps and expand on a few of the things that I found on uh, some of the YouTube lectures. So let's go ahead and get started. First things first, going to start with a new document and I'm going to go with a portrait uh, landscape. Uh, yeah, landscape. Let's do landscape, not portrait. And I'm just going to type in um, my text. Now, the important thing here is that I don't want any sort of stroke outline. Okay, nothing I want a stroke. I just want to fill. And I want to use a font that's going to make sure that it will survive um, being distressed. If you use a font that's too skinny, too small, and you try and erase sections of it, because as you go back and see here, the idea of distressing text is that you're actually cutting out sections. If you have a font that's too small or too skinny, um, when you try and delete sections of the font, you're going to find that it will completely lose a letter. Or And you don't want to lose like a whole letter. You don't want to lose anywhere close to a letter. And so if you use something that's too thin, this is an example of Myriad Pro, this actually might be just a little bit too thin. How come? Um, you start running a few paint strokes across that and entire half letters could disappear. You want to make sure that it's still readable. Distressing text doesn't mean you want to make it unreadable. That's the key thing here. So uh, so what I did is when I was playing around, uh, I found a nice uh, font that was pretty fat, and that was the Poplar. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this fit most of my screen. And so that way it kind of fills up the screen. I'm also going to, since this is going to be like maybe it's a band logo, uh, I do want to make sure that it's a little more readable. So I think what I'll do is I'll pull this font size just down a little bit more. And I'm going to come in here and kern. Kerning in Illustrator, just holding down the Alt key and using the left or right arrow so I can separate these words out just a little bit. I'm thinking, let's see, what would that S look like a little closer? I like that S a little bit closer. And the rest of the gaps are pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more spread between the words. Okay, so I was just holding down the Alt key and hitting one of the left or right arrows. Now, I also want to alter my artboards because right now I'm going to have this big empty space down there. And if I'm, I don't know what I'm going to use this logo for later, but I definitely don't need the extra space. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the edit of my Altboard, artboards and just go ahead and pull this up like yay so. And then I'll call that good. Uh, you exit out of the artboard edit by just clicking on the black arrow. Uh, or you can press, uh, if you like, key shortcuts, key A or V. Uh, for any arrow tool. So I'm um, going to go ahead and lower this down just a little bit. To distress text, what we're going to use is we're going to use brushes. And this is, I'm going to show you using the stock brushes that come in Illustrator, but there are so many vector brushes that are out there that you can get um, created by college students. And DeviantArt is has got tons of vector brushes that you can use to distress your own text. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to load in a basic brush. I watched this one tutorial on the web uh, from a cool guy con that used uh, the charcoal brushes. And I thought, hmm, yeah, that works pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up a brush library. I'm going to go into the artistic and I'm going to load up the chalk and charcoal pencils. And that's going to sit there and that's what I'll use for this lecture. So uh, why do I like this one? Well, because the top one is got a really nice uh, spread so that if I use this to paint across my letters, which I'll then later subtract from the actual shape of the letters, then that will actually work pretty good for me. So I want to have something that's not too thick. I can use something that's thick right here if I want to just take out pieces of the bottom or pieces of the top, and I'll do that also. So the whole process, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking and drawing in something. Uh, I'll use this example. I'm going to go ahead and let me deselect what I've got here, grab my brush tool, grab this brush, and I'll draw across the bottom like yay so.
What I'm going to do is whatever I am drawing with any of these brushes will end up being subtracted from the vector shape of the letters. And that's the whole point of what we're going to get across here. So what are the processes? Well, the first thing you want to make sure is that you create outlines in your fonts because, again, you're going to be dealing with subtracting vector shapes. We'll use the Pathfinder tool. And right-click, create outlines. You can also do it from the top, create outlines. And it doesn't matter how that accomplishes. Now, your text is going to be in the back of your artwork. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and draw whatever we want on top of the text. And then we're going to use Pathfinder to minus the front. And so that process is, again, pretty straightforward. Be careful about turning on a brush if you have your text selected, because then what will happen is it will give it this particular stroke. And that's not something that you want to do. Well, I mean, it might be something you want to do. It's your distress text. Yeah. Anyway, going to go ahead and click the brush tool. And since I have this one that I've already talked about, I'll go ahead and uh, uh, draw across the bottom. And I'm just going to hold down the shift key and draw a pretty straight line. And then I'm going to kind of move this into place. Now, this is going to subtract whatever it's going to cover. And so um, it might look like it's part of it. And maybe it could be. It's your distressed text. But uh, but it's going to subtract whatever it's, it's there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll do the same thing with the top. I'll grab something that's a little rougher on top. I like that one right there. And take and draw that across the top. Now, I'm holding down the shift key getting a nice straight line when I draw with a brush because that way I'm thinking to my I think I want to have a little more control over what gets subtracted from the top or the bottom. Now you can also increase the size of the brush. If I'm thinking to myself, let's let's up that puppy to two points. And I could rotate the brush if I wanted to just a little bit because this one's got a little bit of a curve to it. And then when I move it around, instead of trying to use the mouse, I'll just go ahead and use the arrow tools. And that way I've get uh, some stuff. Now, this actually might be something you might say, ooh, I'd like to bound my text with something. That could be a possibility. You don't even have to subtract it. But I'm going to go and uh, and grunge this up a little bit more, and I'm going to draw some stuff, and I'll use the chalk tool, which is why I originally came to the artistic chalk charcoal pencil tool. And um, the process is just going to be drawing across your letters to create areas that will eventually get subtracted and so uh, so I'll draw things and I'm thinking I'm gonna go for kind of a swoop kind of shape now you don't have to use I'm still on the two-point stroke path you don't have to use only one single kind of color or size you can go ahead and you can use multiples it all depends upon how much you want to distress your text and so what I've got is I've got a couple of strokes in the two-point and I got a, a couple of strokes in the three-point and that's gonna be completely up to you now, don't worry about going across your artboards. Remember, everything that you just drew is going to be used to subtract from your letters. So, in order to subtract a stroke, i got to make sure that I expand it. So, I'm going to press Control-A to select everything i got here. Now, my text has already been expanded, so it's okay if it's selected. It's not, a, it's not an issue. But I'm going to go to Object and expand the appearance. And what it does is it will expand all of those brushes. So, those brushes are now just vector shapes. I'm going to use those vector shapes to go into Pathfinder, go Window, Pathfinder, and I'm going to, in inside my shape mode, minus the front. Now, when you put your cursor over Pathfinder minus front, it says minus front, and it says Alt-click to create a compound shape and subtract from the shape area. So what you're doing is you're minusing everything that's in front of the item that's in the back. doesn't matter how many strokes you have. But here's the deal. It says Alt-click to create a compound shape. If you don't hold down the Alt and you just click what it will do is it will only give you your first letter. Now, that might look cool, okay? But you might think to yourself, ah, I need the rest. And, uh, and so that would be where you need to create a compound shape. And creating a compound shape is kind of two steps. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hold down the Alt key, and we're going to click on the minus front. And that way we create a compound shape. And what that does is that takes and it does all of the subtraction that we want to do, but it keeps us a compound shape. Now, we don't want to keep it that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit expand. And when we hit expand, what that does is that takes out all the pieces that are, well, that we don't need. And in this case, it gives us our distressed text. Now, the awesome part about this process is that if you go through and you find that, ooh, that's a little bit too distressed, uh, control Z back just a couple of steps. Remember though that if you are if you're working on something and it, and uh, you know you don't have the fastest computer or it takes a little while to get there, uh, you know don't be in such a hurry. 
okay? And, uh, and also, when you're working on this particular process, if you have some brushes that you've imported in, after you expand them, you may need to go through a cleanup. Now, I'm going to go ahead, and I'm actually just going to get rid of this one brush right there because that's the one that I think was just a little bit too much for me here. I think this one, what I'll do is I'll pull this brush so it's a little bit bigger, so it's kind of covering a wider area. There we go, and we'll call that. Now, if you have brushes that you've imported from somewhere, um, they may have, depending upon who made them, um, problems with them. They could have, well, I'll just show you the process. I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to expand my appearance. And with these paths selected, I'm going to go to Object, and I'm going to go to Path, and I'm going to go Clean Up. And the problems it could have is you could have extra points, um, and that's the key thing right there because you don't want anything with like stray points otherwise you could simply get something that ends up with the point in the middle of your vector that may not cause any problems later but it could i'm going to go ahead and click ok now i only use the adobe ones so it's going to say that no cleanup was necessary because i didn't import anything from anywhere else and adobe eh, you know they pretty much want to keep their stuff clean so i changed by getting rid of one of my brushes I already expanded. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold down the Alt key and I'm going to click the minus front, let it go through its processes. And after it's done, I'm going to hit the expand tool and I can deselect and see. And that could be. All right. So um, that ends your little mini lecture on how to distress text in Illustrator. Thanks for watching.